Today, I'm delighted to announce that WHO is in discussions with a consortium of companies and institutions to establish a technology transfer hub in South Africa. Everybody's aware of the fact that 99% of the vaccines that Africa uses are imported and only 1% are manufactured in Africa. We've realised that our reliance um, on international partners means that we've had to wait in the queue to find a COVID vaccine and we've not been able to be equal partners in the negotiation for access. You have to be prepared rather than to respond. And I think this hub is all about being prepared rather than to respond to a crisis. There are many partners involved in this project. So first of all, we have the South African partners. This is Afrigen. It's a private facility in South Africa, which is a, not a manufacturing facility. It is a development facility. So this is perfect to establish the, the technology and to then undertake training. Next door to them, just down the road, there is BioVac, the South African vaccine manufacturing facility, and they will be the first recipients of the technology developed at Afrigen. In collaboration with them, there is the South African Medical Research Council and the South African universities that are providing the academic input and the research input because we need not only to make a COVID vaccine, but we need to build a pipeline for example, HIV vaccines, to follow on after COVID to ensure that the facilities that we build are sustainable. WHO and the Medicines Patent Pool and the African CDC and the governments of South Africa are providing this help to the hub. So what is it about? This is about networking in order to make sure that the right technical and scientific ingredients are used. And this is handled especially by WHO. We are supporting WHO in terms of the licensing and the whole IP picture around technology transfer. Afrigen is in major implementation mode. We have ordered all the large pieces of equipment that are required. At the moment, it's mostly training from both sides. We have uh, a lot of expertise in making mRNA. We are helping Afrigen in setting that up. So with the partnership, we are hoping that with Afrigen and WITS, we are able to interchange information and try to create a cohesive project, basically. We've started to work on training packages. We are enlarging our stability testing facility to also accommodate minus 20 and minus 70 degree stability testing. We have expanded offices because suddenly this team are doubling in size. Uh, we as BioVac have been identified as the first spoke. And I think that that has its benefits because we're a couple of kilometers down the road from Afrigen. The team has started to research the mRNA technology quite extensively and we've learned quite a bit of what the technology is all about. And then obviously we need to get up towards phase three production, which is ultimately when BioVac becomes the first spoke or the first recipient. You can see that within such a short period of time, we are beginning to see the actual movement, things being bought, money's being allocated, pledges being made, engagements being made around, for example, patents negotiations. It's a vote of confidence for South Africa and therefore then a vote of confidence for the regulator. What it means is that we have to up our game. We have to ensure that, again, we play an enabling role um, to the mRNA hub. It's building locally, in country, in as far as you are able to do what you can do, but also building local at a regional level to serve a continent. The notion that we have a hub here, that we will be able to actually produce a vaccine pretty much like the ones that are being made, researched, manufactured in the developed world, is just so exciting. I believe that we can make a difference and that we have to. Africa needs to look after itself now. It needs to be self-sustainable. Um, and if we can support the rest of the world in any way, then that would be great. <laughs>